My brothers and sisters and my beloved confreres, a very hearty welcome to each one of you to the sixth Sunday of the liturgical year. Journeying with Matthew the Evangelist, we are taken by Jesus to higher perspectives of our Christian life. We were learning about the importance of the Beatitudes in our life. And last Sunday, we were instructed by Jesus to become the soul of the earth and the light of the world. Today, the Lord invites us to go a bit more further and to see how we need to practice laws and regulations in our daily life. He invites us, in fact, to a new perspective of the purification of our minds and hearts that we will be able to see the divine perspective in our practice of the laws and regulations of our daily life. I have heard about this very interesting story about a thief and a Sufi. The Sufi was sleeping in his small hut one evening and the thief entered his hut naturally to steal something that would be available there. The Sufi, although he became aware of the presence of the thief in his hut, did not wake up. He acted as though he was sleeping. And finally, the thief, when he did not get anything from the hut, was about to go back. And suddenly the Sufi got up from his bed and asked him, What are you doing here? The thief, rather in an angry manner, retorted to him, I came for stealing. But I did not get anything. And the Sufi told, My son, I have only 50 rupees in my hands. And that was in my pocket. Now you take it. But I also wish to give you a message, an advice for your life. And the advice is this. Now on, whenever you go for stealing, tell yourself that you are going for stealing. Two weeks later, the Sufi found the same man in the market and asked him, How about your life? What are you doing now? Are you going for stealing? And the man told Sufi, How could I ever do that? From the day you told me that I must tell myself that I am going for stealing, I never was able to steal. It purified my mind. It purified my attitude. I can never steal. Yes, my brothers, my sisters, this in fact is the message of the readings of today. In the first reading from the book of Therak, we hear that statement of God, if you have a desire, you will keep my commandments. Your faithfulness is a matter of your choice. God has placed before you two things, water and fire. You extend your hands and you will receive the one which you choose. Either water, a symbol of life, or fire, the symbol of destruction and death. Choice is yours. That's where the second reading instructs us how to choose well. We need to depend on the wisdom of God in order to choose the right from the wrong. The knowledge and the wisdom possessed by the leaders of this world are not the right ones. But the wisdom of God surpasses human knowledge. This is here that I am enchanted by the teaching of Jesus in the gospel today. The Lord very clearly says, If your righteousness does not exceed that of the Pharisees and the scribes, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. My dear brothers, my sisters, the Lord is inviting us today to purify our mindset. What was the problem with the Pharisees and the scribes? Naturally, they practiced the Torah. The Mosaic law was a foundational law for them. And they were very strict to practice that. Is Jesus trying to overthrow the Mosaic law? 
Absolutely no. The Lord is telling only one thing. Purify the law in order to understand it in the right perspective. Every law, every regulation is meant for human beings so that they would be able to discover the divinity that is inside of them. We cannot make laws and regulations as masters of the human beings. Instead, they should be subservient and serve the need of the human beings. This is something very special about Jesus. The invitation of Jesus is to purify our attitudes. That's why Jesus says, look at the Old Testament. The Old Testament tells you, do not murder. Of course, when the Old Testament is insisting on not to murder someone, it literally meant the physical mutilation of the body of the other. But the Lord would say in the Gospel today, the moment you call your brother a fool, you have already murdered him. That means your attitude which made you to call the other a fool will also provoke you to go to kill him physically and destroy him. What you need to purify first is your attitude. And again the Lord continues in a further manner to explicate the statement. In the Old Testament, you have always heard that you shall not enter into adultery, which means physical sexual relationship in an illegal manner with someone else. But Jesus would say, the moment you look at a woman with lust, you have committed adultery with her. It's all about your attitude. How do you see the other person? Do you see her, see him as your brother or sister or you? Do you see them as someone to be used for your immediate, emotional, lustful satisfaction? That's where I remember the quote from the famous spiritual guru of the modern times, Gaur Gopal Das. He says, the water that helps the ship to sail through to its destination is also responsible for the ship to sink when it enters the ship. Yes, my brothers and sisters, the same law that can redeem us can also be the reason for our destruction or our damnation until and unless we purify the mind in order to understand the necessity of laws and regulations in our times, we will never be able to attain the gospel value that Jesus is preaching today. I am always enchanted by two personalities in the Bible, Peter and Judas. My brothers and sisters, very often we refer to these people from two different perspectives, Judas as a betrayer. But we do not have that much of animosity towards Peter, the one who denied Jesus. But when I look at these two figures and the actions or the mindset that they possessed, I believe both of them did commit grievous sin. Judas betrayed Jesus. Peter denied Jesus. Is there any difference in the gravity of the mistake they did? But the only difference is the attitude with which they were willing or not willing to purify their mind. When Judas was unwilling to purify his mind and return to the Lord, he ended up in committing suicide. Whereas Peter once again gazing into the eyes of the Lord, understood the compassion and mercy of the Lord flowing into his life and was able to say, Lord, you know that I love you. There began a new purification in the life of Peter. The same man who denied Jesus three times now walks through the street and the people were laying the sick ones in front of him that his shadow at least may fall over them and they were all healed. Purification of mind and attitude can always make us to become people of renewed nature understanding the importance of laws and regulations in our time. 
shall we take the teaching of Jesus a bit more seriously? Until and unless your righteousness goes beyond that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Are you willing to purify your mind, to hear Jesus a bit more closely and to live in accordance with the gospel? Amen.